me the nerdy hero welcome back today we're doing the spider-man homecoming review and my gosh what was this movie oh yes this movie was awesome i don't even know where to begin i i was walked into that movie and i walked out of it ear to ear grinning the whole way through uh i don't even know where to start because like everything was perfect tom holland as the spider-man he was fantastic is he my favorite spider-man to this day that's hard to say because I love Andrew's Spider-Man. I loved and will always love Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man because that's always my number one. That's my Spider-Man I began with. But this, if it's not my favorite, it's pretty darn close because my God, he was awesome. He was the most comic book accurate version of Spider-Man I've seen to date. And that's pretty hard to say because they've all been pretty comic book accurate in their own versions. And this one was just amazing. I don't even know where to start. Uh, is this the best Spider-Man movie ever? It's, it may be the number one best Spider-Man movie ever. <laughs> it also could be the second best if you put Spider-Man 2 above it. So it's either Spider-Man 2 or, or Spider-Man Homecoming. It's either one of those two. So it, I think it's better than Spider-Man 1 with Tobey Maguire back in 2002. I think it beats that one. So it's either Spider-Man 2 or Spider-Man Homecoming. It's up there. It's that good. And honestly, it's, it may be one of the best Spider-Man movie ever. I'm not sure. It's probably one of the best Marvel Cinematic Universe movies ever. It may be up there. It's in that list for sure. So just to get started with the review is when they first started production of this movie, they said that they wanted to go with a John Hughes feel. John Hughes is director for like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And they wanted just that much more grounded day to day, keep it low to the ground, Spider-Man feel with the family and school and more of his real life. And I guess to balance that was with uh, being Spider-Man. And my gosh, the act, they succeeded perfectly. You really feel that kind of feel that they were going with. There's even some huge references to John Hughes's um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. There's even legit, I don't want to spoil it, but there's some pretty good Easter eggs regarding that and the little, little cues that they do. Film score, the music. When the music, when the, I remember listening to the score when it was released uh, a week or two ago. And I'm like, okay, this is okay. And then I found this fan-made Spider-Man Homecoming score that was just beautiful. And I thought it was the best thing ever. And I thought it could probably be better than Danny Elfman's score. It was really, really that good. And I'm like, dang it, I wish that was going to be in Spider-Man Homecoming. Well, now that I've seen Spider-Man Homecoming, I can honestly say that, yeah, that fan made fantastic. The Michael Giacchino score that he, he made for this movie fits perfectly into the tone of this movie and how it really is a coming of age kind of story. And the tone of that movie and the score really just melds perfectly together. So I can't knock it for being there that it is because it fit perfectly in the movie. The CGI was phenomenal. You know, when the trailers first show up, or like in, Spider in Captain America Civil War, people complain about the CGI for Spider-Man suit. Or that the, you know, the trailers are coming out saying it's too much CGI. When you watch this movie, I'm watching that suit and it looked phenomenal. Whenever it's CGI, when it's live action, it looked great. They did some really good work with that. Uh, Michael Keaton is the villain. Now Marvel was known for their villains being pretty much two-dimensional. Not being that greatest or exceptional for every, for like Loki and a couple other ones maybe. Michael Keaton as the villain here, as playing Bolster, who's like a second-rate villain in the first place. He was awesome. Because he's not a villain that's trying to destroy the world or take over the world or destroy the universe or take over the universe. He's just the average guy just trying to get some money to take care of his family. And it's just his job. He's just a criminal, kind of. Ooh, he's a criminal. And he's just trying to provide for his family and live his life and that's all he's doing he really wants to kill spider-man at certain points but at certain points he actually does have the ability to but he doesn't because he just doesn't really care he just wants to get his you know item and go that's all he really that's his main priority so i thought that was really interesting that he's just not your average villain trying to take over the world he's trying to do his job trying to take over take care of uh, his family basically. He really wants to kill Spider-Man at certain points. At certain points he actually does have the ability to, but he doesn't because he just doesn't really care. He just wants to get his, you know, item and go. That's all he really, that's his main priority. So I thought that was really interesting that he's just not your average villain trying to take over the world. He's, you also have Mercer Tomei, who is obviously gorgeous, but besides that, we have Mercer Tomei coming in and playing Aunt May like she did in Civil War and she's playing it here. 
and she is she's fantastic in the movie you know for the small mo moments that she has with Peter and you know they actually make a lot of the jokes the fact that yes she's actually really attractive to be his aunt he makes the pretty self-aware about it, and they have some really good jokes with that if you watch my reviews you know that one of my biggest pet peeves in movies is the pacing and I've actually had some issues with pacing in some of the previous Spider-Man movies maybe not that drastic like some other films I've seen but this movie the pacing was fantastic it just felt like the story was slowly moving along not slowly in a bad way but like very gracefully moving along with its narrative as it's going through and it felt fantastic the whole way through Zendaya playing uh, the character Michelle uh, she's not in the movie that much you could actually legit cut her out of the movie and the movie would not change anyway but it is nice having her there because she has some really good funny moments she brings just uh, her characters like a brings this weird introspective uh, viewpoint into what's going on and it's kind of funny in a certain way so it's kind of nice having her there in the marketing they use Zendaya everywhere she's in the poster and everything but she really does not do much in the movie at all she doesn't do anything in the movie but she's there just for some funny moments Liz Allen or uh, the character of Liz Allen and the relationship he has with Peter because she's love interest in the way you know and he's always trying to get with her and that's the way they're going with it she and him have this really funny relationship where like She's a senior and he's a sophomore and uh, does she like him? Does he, he obviously likes her and it's just it's kind of funny throughout the movie and you know does it really lead into anything or will it lead into anything in the future? You guys will have to see the movie to find out but it you know it's kind of funny where it leads off and where it ends at the end of the movie. Now there's this scene in the movie that oh my god I can't talk about it in this half of the review when I get to spoilers I'll talk about it. There's a scene in the movie there's like two emotional scenes with Peter. One of them was with Aunt May and it's nice but there's another one that I can't get too much detail but when you're watching it you're like you feel so bad for Peter right now and it really dawns on you the fact that this Spider-Man really is a kid. He is scared. He doesn't know what he's doing something you know you see him get thrown around get punched you see him do all these crazy funny jokes and you think oh he's a superhero but no this scene really makes you realize and if, when you see the movie you'll know what i'm talking about this scene makes you realize that this is a kid regardless of everything he still has that chapter 15 16 year old mentality and he's scared at times and that scene legit had a tear in my eye people were crying in the theater it was seriously an awesome moment they had in the movie. Um, one more thing I want to talk about is the Tony Stark relationship with Peter Parker and this was like a father fatherly relationship and it's the way it kind of feels like it. At one point Peter uh, Tony's like man I feel like my father right now and it was uh, in the marketing they used Tony Stark a lot in the marketing and people were saying it's gonna be Iron Man 4 it's Iron Man's movie not Spider-Man's movie and in the movie he's not in the movie that much most of the time i forgot that iron man's even supposed to show up and he then he shows up i'm like oh that's right iron man's here this is in the mcu this is great i understand why they use him in the marketing in a lot of the trailers because it's marketing they want to show the fact that zendaya is there they want to show the fact that our robert dyan jr iron man is there they want to show that it's part of the mcu they want to show that it's part of all that they want to show that iron man's there robert dyan jr they want to show that's part of the mcu and everything like that it's in the same world as the avengers they really want to bring the audience to understand that this is a new spider-man it's in the mcu so even if you didn't like the last Spider-Man or any of the other ones try this one because we're trying something very new so that's what the marketing point was when showing so much Iron Man in it and it drew people in and hopefully this movie is going to do great in the box office because this was amazing so that's my review of Spider-Man Homecoming this movie blew my mind I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 one of my favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe movies of all time I think Civil War is still my favorite I'm not sure but this is pretty darn good. So that's the end of the review, guys. Now I'm going to talk about the spoilers. There's not many spoilers to talk about in this movie, but there are some pretty big ones out of the few that there are. First of all, Zendaya is MJ. I guess we freaking knew it. I kept saying it. She's going to be Mary Jane. She's going to be Mary Jane. And she is. A lot of people are expecting if she is Mary Jane, her name is still Michelle. But they'll call her MJ at one point, and that's what happened. She called herself MJ at the end of the movie. And everyone's like, oh, eh, Mary Jane. I guess he's going to bang her. Ha <laughs> I've always been on board with the fact that Zendaya playing Mary Jane, or playing MJ. I'm actually really excited that she is going to be playing that. A lot of people were not on board with it, saying that she's not Mary Jane. Well, technically, she's not Mary Jane, but she's going to be playing the MJ role in this franchise. So there you go. Um, some of the emotional scenes. I want to talk about, again about that emotional scene I talked about in the review. Is that part where you see Peter get smacked down. He gets, he's being crushed by all this weight of all this debris. And it's actually a scene from a comic book. I remember looking at this movie in the theater and I'm watching the scene with tears in my eyes as he is crying for help from anybody. He's scared and he's just like, help me, help me. And then he starts talking to himself. He sees a reflection of his, his mask and him facing, you know, like right next to each other. And he hears T uh, Tony's voice. If you know nothing about the suit, then you don't deserve it. And then he's like, come on, Spider-Man, come on. 
and he starts lifting himself up and you see him use all that weight that's actually from a comic book itself maybe not the same dialogue but still that same panel and i'm just like oh my gosh they went they went there oh it was might be one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie it may be my favorite scene i'm not sure it's one of the top three favorite scenes of the whole film and i legit had tear in my eye i was like dang this is so good the fact that i want to talk about that scene where uh tom goes to pick up liz from her parents house and the door opens and it's adrian tombs it's uh, michael keaton as the father of liz allen that whole scene was hilarious oh my gosh the theater lost their minds everyone's jaw dropped when he opens the door you're like oh snap <laughs> And it reminded me so much of, uh, what's that scene in 22 Jump Street? Nice to meet you. Uh, my parents are here too. Maya, hurry up. Your mama done found the table she wanted. It reminded me so much of that same moment in that movie. And it was fantastic. I laughed so hard. And that whole scene where he's in there getting the photos taken and talking to Michael Keaton's character, Adrian. And then that whole car ride to the homecoming dance was... First of all, that, homecoming, that ride to the homecoming dance was really intense. My gosh, you could just cut the tension in that car. It was so good. But the scene in the house when they're taking the photos together, people were just losing their minds in the theater. It was so funny. I loved it. Because it's just like the most awkward situation you could be of without ever, without even he even realizing it was an awkward situation. It was just, it was just funny. It was just pure comedy gold. I like some of the things that they brought up at the, uh, in the movie during the climax of the final battle was that, one more thing I wanted to bring out is the fact that the ending, Spider-Man saves Vulture. He saves Adrian Toomes. And it was just something very different. We haven't seen in any of the Spider-Man movies before. Whether the villain dies or dies by their own hand or just dies in general. Something we haven't seen is Spider-Man really just like saving the day and saving the villain from himself as well. That was such a, like a nice little thing that they added in there at the end which was really nice and touching. But now we gotta talk about the biggest spoiler of them all which was mind-blowing. The fact that Pepper Potts came back and there she's back together with Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark. <laughs> No, that's not the spoiler. Iron Spider Suit. Oh my gosh, the theater lost their minds. People were cheering. People were like, oh my gosh. I was grinning ear to ear. That spider suit would look amazing. And then he turns it down. Bruh. He turns it down because he wants to go back to being low to the ground and just working in Queens and being through Spider-Man, which is fantastic. But you know for a fact we're going to see that suit in Avengers Infinity War. We better see that suit again very, very soon. That suit was beautiful. And it reminded me of, obviously it was meant to be the Iron Spider suit, which looks nothing like that suit, but it's like an armored Spider-Man suit that they showed in the movie. So it kind of reminds me of that Spider-Man suit, the Iron Spider-Man suit, mixed with some other concept I've seen, some other concept art, or like some uh, other comic renditions of Spider-Man suit that I've seen. So it's kind of like a mix of all that coming into this, and it looked, oh, it was beautiful. And people always complain about comic accurate suits, you know, they want the classic Spider-Man suit back. But the moment everybody sees this on screen, they're like, screw comic accurate, we want that. That was amazing. So that's my review, guys, and my spoiler review of Spider-Man Homecoming. Remember, you can comment down below everything you guys thought of my review, or if you guys want to talk about the movie yourself, down below in the comments. Keep the spoilers down to a minimum right now, since the movie just came out. Remember, you can like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, remember, keep it nerdy. Because I will kill you and everybody you love. He's still out there. I just got to do this on my own. What's up everybody, it's me the Nerdy Hero, just reminding you guys to check out tpublic.com so you can check out all my latest Nerdy Hero shirts and gear, as well as to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can check out my latest videos. And always guys, remember, keep it nerdy.